What's happening, travelers? This is Matt Javitt coming at you with another episode of Passport Joy Travel Talk. And today, uh, we're going to try to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to name the top five places where I would want to be during this pandemic. Um, so we're going to get into that a little bit and talk about the, the virus as well and just some of my thoughts. Uh, first, I'm going to read a quick comment. Uh, this is on the Amazon Prime World Barbershop Adventures page. From Deborah, she says, fascinating. I wouldn't have thought that this show would be my cup of tea, but I found it absolutely fascinating. I'm someone who loves to travel and loves learning about different cultures, and I felt like the series delivered such a unique insight that it's so different than to any other travel show I've seen. After watching this series, a small part of me wishes I had facial hair so I could have my own barbershop experience. Uh, hilarious. Uh, thank you so much, Deborah, for that comment. I uh, really appreciate those, uh, that comment and, and all the comments that are coming in. Again, please, uh, Amazon Prime, check out the series, leave a comment there, and also Apple Podcasts, where you're listening to this thing. Go on Apple, give us a, a review, give us some stars, and uh, add your review there. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. It really helps get our uh, message out to other travelers. And uh, what is our message, right? Uh, the, the idea for me is always to just share parts and bits and pieces of what I and what we have learned from traveling uh, to all the different unique places that we've had the opportunity to do that. And that's that's really why I want to just keep this message out um, to encourage that. And I think that in the near future, especially once we get through this, uh, the, the virus and everything that's going on in the world right now, travel is going to be way different. How people travel, especially, I mean, you look at the airlines, uh, potentially the um, options of travel could decrease. Um, how we go about that uh, might be disrupted in, in many ways. It's going to be, it's going to change. But at, at the end, I think, and my hope is that people still have an open mind about travel. Um, one of the things that really has has been a spotlight during this virus is these wet markets. Uh, if if you haven't seen the videos or you haven't uh, been seen this conversation, it's the idea that these markets that exist in China, on um, these wet markets. They're saying that the virus started there. With so many unknowns about this virus, I have no idea how they can pinpoint where the virus started in a particular market. I'm very skeptical of that conclusion, but they're trying to draw back to one particular market where there's all kinds of different animals and um, available that mix up with food. And if you've never seen these markets, again, it's, it's a place where people in these cultures go to um, get uh, food for their home cooking, uh, essentially, but they have a wide variety of food. And because they um, eat differently than us, they're in a different part of the world of us, there's different food options available. Um, some of them are quite extreme, things that I would probably never eat, um, even though I've had the opportunity to eat a lot of food around the world. Some of them are, are things that I'd probably steer clear of. But at the same time, some of them are, are the things that I would. And I bring up markets because this has always, if you've listened to the show in the past, you know that this is my favorite thing to do when we travel. So to me, it's it's what gives you a quick insight of the cultures that you're visiting um, because you get to see not only the, the food and the animals and the, and the fruits and vegetables and the things that they're selling and, and how they barter and how they go about handling their business. It gives you it gives you that look into the, these people, the community, um, the things they're wearing, how they talk, how they how they move and, and, and interact with each other, um, and then how they also handle tourists. So I love these markets, and I've talked about them from all around the world where we've seen it um, in Peru and Chile and and then parts of Asia. And uh, I mean, we have them in the Western world where um, you go to, to f farmer markets and, and you have opportunities to buy things, but there's, it's just different. Um, in, in the settings in, the, in Asia, there's a lot of people. And that's the thing that gets lost sometimes is how many people there are in these cities. If you got 15 to 20 million people in a city and they're coming to a market to purchase things uh, to take back, you're going to have a wide range of not only tastes, but you got to have a wide range of things to sell because you, you want to stick out. You want to be different. You want to draw an audience and then you, you want to be able to sell your thing. So I just, I just, I say all this because as we begin to think about travel after the virus, the hope is there won't be a lot of judgment going on because the things that we've been seeing on, on the news about where they're estimating the virus started from uh, in the, the people that live there. So 
I just want to keep an open mind on that in these markets and um, and just travel in, in general because it can teach you so much about not only the world but about yourself and how you handle these situations when you come back. And what's, what's funny about this this whole virus situation is you begin to really understand more about yourself and probably the people you live with because if you're staying by the rules of self-isolation like they're asking us to and you're spending this time home, I mean, this is what I've been telling people. This is how Nikki and I lived for 27 months. I mean, the fact that we spent 24-7 together for as long as we did, this is not a change for us. Uh, we, we spent so much time together uh, already, um, so something like this doesn't affect us much. But you see the comments and commentary from uh, on social media from friends and family and how they're dealing with it, whether it's with their kids or their partner or, or whoever they're with. And um, I think a lot of people are going to learn a lot about themselves and the people they live with in this process. Because if you can't handle a week or two with somebody, you got to probably start having some conversations and figure out a way to uh, work through it or mitigate it better because it's just different. I, I know that Nikki and I are, are super blessed to have found each other, but I just can't imagine um, being a week into this and, and already getting squirmy and having to find a way to get out of the house because of uh, uh, the person you're with. But So that's, that's it. That's, and it's just kind of funny uh, for us to, to be able to hear this, this commentary from other people um, when we had just had a chance to do it and, and enjoyed um, almost every day of it. So to wrap up uh, on the virus, we don't really know what's going to happen. It, it's so hard to determine what's going to happen, um, how long the isolation will last, um, how this will continue to move. Uh, what it's doing to Europe right now is, is devastating and um, just how uh, it's going to impact America and the decisions that are made. But there's only so much you can control uh, in this process and you can only really control what you're doing. Um, so do your best to, as I am, I'm trying to do my best to stay away from the news cycles and um, get updates um, periodically throughout the day and not getting consumed by it. Um, but just do your best to, to stay positive. Stay positive, but also you, you want to stay as educated as you can because uh, ignorance does not mean this thing goes away. You've got to be aware of how it's handling in your region as well, your region or your part of the world or your town or city, wherever you have it. So you want to be at least to have some knowledge of what's going on so you're abiding by the rules and doing what's socially responsible. Because you, you see what, what how it ha handled through Japan and having the chance to spend time in Japan and, and see how amazing those people are. It was not surprising to me that the whole country isolated as quickly as they did to protect their elderly because the respect they have for the older folks there and how they, um, I guess, wanted to show their loyalty to that generation by doing the right thing. And uh, it was no surprise to me that the Japanese numbers were so low because um, just how they they consider uh, mankind and how they treat each other with the kindness um, based on our time spent there. So... But that's it. Let's let's talk about uh, some fun. So we were uh, a friend was we were kind of just kicking on ideas of in this time of quarantine and isolation, where would I want to be based on our travels? Um, so I just came up with a quick five list of the places that if if I could just be like Star Trek transmitted into another place in the world, where would I want to go? My first I, I, my assumption is if I could go anywhere in the world, it'd probably be Phu Quoc, Vietnam. So Phu Quoc is a little island that is south of Cambodia in Vietnam in that ocean there and it was awesome we spent I want to say nine days there and it's particularly this time of the year is unbelievable I always keep their temperature or their weather on my phone so I can just pull it up from time to time when it gets cold in America I can just look at their weather and see how gorgeous it is and like today I'm looking at it right now low 78 high 90 sunny and that's essentially every day um, and I know some people will say well 78 is not that low but for me that's like perfect weather sunny and uh, gorgeous warmth every day and that's how Fuquak is essentially from December to May it rains like one or two times a day or one or two times a month and then the rest of the time it is gorgeous so yeah Fuquak Vietnam because not only do you get that culture of Vietnam and how amazing the people are there um, you, you're, it's a, it's an island, so you're on beach. You've got access to the beach, and it's super cheap. The dollar goes a long way, and we just had a blast there. Um, we actually mixed in. We we'd won a um, a stay at a Raz, a Radisson Casino um, hotel. It's a gorgeous casino, and um, we had a chance to stay there, and uh, that was fun. It was it was just opening, so there wasn't many people there. 
but we had a chance to stay there for a couple of days and then we spent the rest of the time in the heart of the island just checking it out scootering around um finding things to get into spending time on the beach you know just having a blast so fukuok would be number one two would probably be queenstown new zealand uh, you've heard me talk about how gorgeous New Zealand is and the beauty of the island and, and um, just the, the I'm not, not the island. Well, I guess it is an island, but the beauty of the country and particularly the South Island and just the, the mountains and the lakes, the long hikes you can take. And the fact that in this particular case, since we're talking about the virus, um, the isolation. I mean, there's only uh, six million people in New Zealand And uh, I think that's a big part of of this like pandemic thing is to me, it's less about the fear of the virus, but it's more about how will people react in times of crisis and the panic that you see and um, just the uh, erratic thinking at times. So a place like New Zealand is you you get away from all that uh, and because the numbers are just so low and there's 20,000 people there in in Queenstown and it's just gorgeous, sits on a lake and uh, great, great food options and just amazing hikes every day. You can go on a great hike every single day and uh, have a blast. So that would be, uh, Queenstown would be very high on the list. Another spot would be Dermy, Albania. This is probably a, a creative one, but Dermy is... Uh, another beautiful beach um, town within Albania. It's a town, definitely it's small, but we went there because his brother-in-law, her sister's husband, um, is is from that area. So we had a chance to visit with his grandmother, his aunts and uncles, and stay there for a week and take it all in. And it's just, um, it's out of the way, it's small, it's remote, but they have a great beach life. They got a few restaurants and food options in town, and uh, it's just gorgeous. And it's one of those places that um, if we get uh, through this summer, and there's, there's an opportunity for you to travel in the summer, um, July or August, put Dermy on your list. A lot of people are going to Croatia and Greece, and those places are amazing, but Albania is very inviting. It is um, always uh, stepping its game up, and it's a, uh, I think it's going to be a destination in the future um, as those places be, get more expensive, and Dermy, uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, and Albania stays cheap then it'll be a place that draws a lot of new tourists. But um, we really enjoyed our time there. Um, a lot of it had to do, too, because we were there with family, and had, you had those nights and dinners um, just sharing conversation and wine and stuff like that. But um, I loved everything about Albania, and I really hope to get the chance to go back um, soon uh, to Albania. Another spot that would be on my list would be Tasmania, Australia. Again, it's a lot of it has to do with the remote remoteness of Tasmania and it is an island south of the main Australia um, huge island um, that is Australia Uh, Tasmania is a little small island Uh, honestly before we traveled there I would have not known where Tasmania was I thought it was in Europe somewhere and then um, once we knew we were going there I started doing research and I was like wow this place is amazing and it really is it's isolated it's um, very kind of country-ish but um, romantic quaint small towns, super small towns, but a lot of places to like to go to the pub and, and um, get some good food and a lot of hikes and, and the places to, to kind of walk around and um, a lot of wine, a lot of wine vineyards as well and great beer. Um, they had two local Tasmanian beers that I, I just fell in love with. But yeah, Tasmania is, is a spot that I would put on my list. And finally, uh, Kyotango, Japan. So Nikki and I, when we spent six weeks in Japan, one of the we spent one full week in Kyotango. I'm probably mispronouncing that, um, Kyotango. But um, it we stayed a week at an oyster farm with a family there. It was a multi generational family. They had a she was probably a five year old daughter, um, the husband and wife, and then who were probably in their thirties, and then their parents, who were probably in their I'll say sixties or seventies maybe. Yeah, probably 70s, but amazing, amazing family, no locks on the doors, um, sleep on the be- sleep on the floor, meals very low to the ground because um, uh, that's it's how the Japanese eat in, in my big 6'6 six, six frame. Uh, it wasn't always that comfortable, but they would have these large, massive breakfasts, and a lot of it was from the sea that was caught right outside our door within 50 yards, and they would bring it in and, and have this amazing fish. Um, in, in different uh, fruits and vegetables for us to eat. But the hospitality was off the charts. It actually rained there 
the almost the entire time we were there, but we still loved it because of just the like the remoteness and the peacefulness and um, just how kind people were in this little town. And I would just go out on long walks around this lake um, with a with with an umbrella or a, um, a raincoat on and just take these long walks because it's just so gorgeous, uh, the scenery. Um, but again, it was remote. And it, like I said about the Japanese people earlier in the podcast, it's just that's that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's the people. It's how awesome they are. And that's that's why I would really enjoy going back there at some point. But and that's why I made our list, because if you're stuck in a situation like this of those places that I named, they're all kind of remote. They're all kind of out of the way, less populated, less chaotic. And um, but the natural beauty and clean air around you. And that's those are kind of the things I would want to to be a part of uh, in a situation like this, where if you're kind of self isolated and you're you're doing your own thing, and but you can still kind of take long walks and and, and take in the, the beauty around you. The, that's why uh, Fuqua, Queenstown, Dermy, Tasmania, and Coyotango all made my list. And I'll put links if these things intrigue you. I'll put links to to these locations and the other podcasts and and blog sites that we. Um, that we shared when we were in those places talking about it. And I'll also put a link to a market called the Khan Market in Da Nang, Vietnam. It's a market I recorded as we walked through it. So you can get us get an idea. If you've never seen these these markets um, and you're only seeing what's being shown you about China, this is a, a walkthrough that I did in Vietnam that's kind of similar. Again, we went to markets in, man, name it, Vietnam, multiple cities, Cambodia, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, uh, Singapore's weren't that much different than a Western uh, potentially. We, we did go to some, uh, there's little India in Singapore that was a little bit different. I'm not sure. I don't remember to go into one in Bali, but Hong Kong. Yes. Um, and then Peru, I, I, I had this photo of one in Peru that would, would boggle your mind because I took it from above the, um, we were at this little market and I took it from above. I went up, up, like three, I went up two uh, flights of stairs and I took a photo down so you could see it. A lady was selling bananas next to goat heads. There was like five goat heads severed off next to her bananas. And it was shocking because I'd never seen it before and it was so different to me. But it's common there. It's not a big deal because for them, they take the goat head home, they cook it up, they make some soup, whatever it is, and they're eating bananas separately. I have no idea, but that's all, that's all I'm saying is we want to, if you don't know anything about these places, you, the first thing you, you think to do is judge, but to them, it's not different because that's what they know. So just keep an open mind, keep that travel bug going. Um, if you're, if you're trying to continue to explore and do some things, Nikki and I, like we are supposed to go to Mexico in a day or two, it's been canceled obviously. And that's a bummer cause I haven't been to Mexico in forever. And I was really looking forward to this trip and we got Morocco on the horizon, I'm supposed to go to Africa, go to Morocco in, in, a, in a couple months. So not sure what's going to happen, but, um, just stay positive. Keep dreaming of those locations, keep doing your research. And then once this thing opens up. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be, uh, it, will prices drop? Will people be so ready to get people to book and on Airbnb and hotels and things like that, that pri- prices really drop? Or will they go high because of, of less competition and places going out of business? I have no idea right now. Um, my gut is that it might be, it might be a good time to travel in the near future because of um, kind of a rebound effect and, and prices might drop. But it's hard to know. It really is. And what, what the impact will be for the next, for the next couple of years. So I feel very fortunate that this did not happen while we were traveling. Obviously, if, if this would have happened in the, in the middle of our 27 months, I'm not sure what we would have done. If we would have just hunkered down wherever we would have been, or we would have come home. I have no idea. Um, and I'm so glad we don't have to face that, that decision. And I felt so terrible for those that saved their money to, to take on, take a big trip or, or uh, to travel long term, and they're stuck in this because uh, it just there's just so many unknowns. But but that is it. Hopefully uh, you found some value in that. Hopefully it's it's some fun stuff to think about. And um, if you have any ideas of where you'd want to get stuck, feel free to shoot me a note. And as always, I really greatly appreciate any reviews that you would leave on Apple, on Amazon, World Barbershop Adventures, which is coming soon to germany in the german language and to japan in japanese so that'll be a lot of fun once it goes to those places the next week or so and that is it uh continue to 
grow and keep doing what we're doing and, and share content and uh, hopefully there's you're getting some value out of this because uh, you know, it's it's a lot of fun to talk travel and, and uh, it's just impacted our lives so much so keep dreaming of that next trip talk soon <laughs>